Today we're in Beacon, New York, Quake Town here in Dutchess County. Hi everybody, I'm Diane. And I'm George. Welcome to this episode of Diane and George Explore. The world is yours when Diane and George explore. Whenever possible, we take public transportation on our explorations. On this episode, we're taking the Metro North train from the majestic Grand Central Station on 42nd Street in Manhattan to Beacon, New York. And here we are in Beacon already. The Dia Art Center is no doubt one of Beacon's main attractions. There is a free shuttle bus from Metro North Beacon train station to the Dia Beacon and other key spots in Beacon that runs Monday through Saturdays except holidays. Otherwise, it's a 10 minute walk from the station to the Dia. Just follow all of the hipsters and other urban dwellers arriving from New York City. Or if you drive to Beacon, the Dia offers free parking. DIA was founded in 1974 in New York City to help artists achieve visionary projects that might not otherwise be realized because of scope or scale. In 2003, DIA opened this outpost on the banks of the Hudson River. Over the years, it's helped to transform Beacon from a declining city into the bustling, hip town and thriving arts community that it is today. The Dia occupies a former Nabisco box printing factory. It was built in uh, 1929. It's considered a landmark of early 20th century industrial architecture. And it stands as a symbol of Beacon's past as a major industrial and manufacturing city. DIA features a number of long-standing exhibits that have been on display for several years, as well as new and changing ones, like this Andy Warhol exhibit. And there are others you can experience hands-on. Every Saturday and Sunday, there are guided tours that are included with the price of admission. The museum has a peaceful outdoor garden, where you might find someone you know resting after a few hours of enjoying the museum. Continuing on, you can pick up the free loop shuttle on the street right outside the Dia, which would take you to Lower Main Street, Mount Beacon, and Upper Main Street. The tourist office is located right near the Lower Main Street stop. If you're up for the mile or so fairly steep climb to the summit of Mount Beacon, you'll be treated to spectacular panoramic views of the Hudson River. On the day we were there, lots of people were doing it. For any provisions before entering the trail, Bob's Country Store is right across the street Main Street is the hub of Beacon. It features many historical buildings offering a variety of shops, including trendy boutiques, a record store, no surprise who I found poking through the old records, a vintage clothing store, and more. There's even a glass blower with a working kiln, plus an adjacent shop that sells hand blowing glass. From October to January, you can blow your own ornaments but you have to book an appointment well in advance. On the second Saturday of every month, the City of Beacon offers what's known as Second Saturday, a citywide celebration of the arts. Perhaps our favorite event during the second Saturday of this particular exploration was the Luthier Exhibition at the Highland Cultural Center. FYI, a luthier is a person who makes string instruments such as violins and guitars. And it was awesome to see so many handmade stringed instruments on view, to hear them being played. <laughs> And we even had a chance to speak with luthier John Vergara of Beacon. I had a lesson with a virtuoso, my teacher. I sat down and he had a guitar that was made in Spain. And I just looked at it. My guitar wasn't nearly as nice. I was like, can I play? He says, be very careful. And I just looked at it. I was like, and I was 19 at the time. I said, I want to make this. So at that point, it was very clear what I was going to do with my life. But it's not an easy journey to do that. You need tools, you need the shop, you need skills. You know, my grandfather showed me how to put a wood in a vise and I've cut it. And I guess maybe I just, uh, I'm lucky that I have a natural aptitude for that kind of stuff. Here are two instruments that John made in his shop. That's an oud on the right. On Sundays, just off Main Street, in the parking lot behind the mobile gas station, from April through fall is the Beacon Flea Market. Its website states that vendors sell a variety of unique items, but we were disappointed with the offerings on the day we visited. The nearby farmer's market on Main Street was good. That's true. You could buy fresh cheese, bread, honey, and other local items. We also explored two nice waterfront parks near the Beacon train station. One was the Pete and Tashi Seeger Riverfront Park. 
The park was named after the famous folk singer, environmentalist, and anti-war activist Pete Seeger, who founded Clearwater in the 1960s with the mission of cleaning up the Hudson River. He thought that sailing and performing up and down the Hudson River in a replica of the 18th and 19th century sloops, which was so prevalent on the Hudson River during that time, he would be bringing attention to just how polluted the Hudson had become. He died in 2014 at 94 years old, but his mission continues. The other park, Long Dock, is a man-made peninsula that was created to ferry rail cars across the Hudson River. It was a critical 19th century transportation link between New England and points west. Now, it's a riverfront destination, which has a kayak pavilion, a boat launch, rehabilitated wetlands, and meadows that attract wildlife, a river overlook deck, and a shaded plaza for informal dining. You can also rent bikes in the park. One of the most popular attractions in this park is Beacon Point, a shoreline installation by artist George Trachis. The work projects out over the river, and at high tide, water actually flows through it. The restaurant scene has changed in Beacon over the years. When we first started visiting Beacon years back, there were far fewer options. Now, there's a wide variety along Main Street. On our recent trips to Beacon, we had three lunches and two dinners. We explored all of the recommended restaurants on various websites and settled on the following. For lunch, we ate in the Roundhouse, which is a hotel, restaurant, and event space located on Upper Main Street. The highlight of this place for sure is the adjacent waterfall, which is part of Fishkill Creek. In the warmer months, you can sit out on the patio and listen to the rushing water, which is exactly what we did. Let's listen. We also had lunch in Inoteca Ama. It offers wood-fired pizza and other dishes with fresh ingredients. Personal pizzas have the option for a cauliflower crust, which is perfect with those who want gluten-free, like me. It also is a clean and airy place. Then there's Beacon Bread Company. Several years ago, we pulled into the parking lot there on the right, and we smelled freshly baking bread. In that instant, the Beacon Bread Company became our go-to lunch spot. It's a simple place with a country diner feel. And even though there are now many choices along Main Street, this one is still worth considering. We checked out the menu of Melzinga Tap House in the afternoon, which is right across the street from the waterfall. And we came back later for a delicious dinner. We also had dinner with friends in another restaurant that wasn't very good, so choose carefully. There were also some honorable mentions along Main Street that looked good, but we didn't get a chance to try, including the kitchen sink, which has a small upscale menu, Meyer's Old Dutch, a cool burger place, and Beacon Pantry, a sophisticated cafe with sandwiches, soups, and salads. If a beverage is what you have in mind, there's the Beacon Natural Market for a freshly made vegetable juice. If you're looking for a drink with a little more punch, there's the Hudson Valley Brewery. While they don't serve food, there was a food truck located conveniently outside their front door, and they have a rotating lineup of pop-up kitchens. And then there's Dennings Point Distillery, or North Chestnut Street, right off Main, where you can get a free tour by the distiller, samples at a very good price, and a blues band playing amid the stills. Okay, so we're hustling back to the train station to catch the last train out of Beacon, 10.03. We had a wonderful day in Beacon. Keep watching, viewers. Next, we'll be taking you through the map and itinerary of our trip to Beacon. And we have some tips for visiting the Dia Art Center. We took the Metro North train from Grand Central Station on 42nd Street in Manhattan. Our train traveled along the Hudson River, providing beautiful views of the river and the mountains on the other side. Heading northbound, try to nab a seat on the left side of the train facing forward for the best views. We visited Beacon three times for this episode. Twice we took the 10 minute walk to the Dia Center and once we took the free loop shuttle. We participated in the tour of the Dia, which is included with the price of admission. From the Dia, we took the free loop shuttle to Mount Beacon. We didn't have time to climb to the summit, but from what we've been told, the views up there are spectacular. Continuing on, we took the free loop shuttle to Main Street 
And then we strolled along Main Street, stopping in shops and exploring various restaurants along the way. On one visit, we were in Beacon on Second Saturday, the city's monthly art celebration. We visited a few galleries along Main Street, and we particularly liked the Luthier exhibit at the Howland Cultural Center. On a Sunday, we stopped at the Beacon Flea Market in this area, which was a disappointment, and also a farmer's market here on Main Street. We also visited two waterfront parks near the Beacon train station, the Pete and Tashi Seeger Riverfront Park and the Long Dock Park. For three separate lunches, we ate once on the outdoor patio at the Roundhouse, once at Enoteca Ama, and once at the Beacon Bread Company. For dinner, we ate in Melzinga Tap House. We also had dinner in another place on a different trip, but we wouldn't recommend that restaurant. For beverages, we visited the Beacon Natural Market for a freshly made vegetable juice. For craft beer, there's the Hudson Valley Brewery. And for crafted spirits, there's the Dennings Point Distillery on North Chestnut Street right off of Maine. Here are some dia deals. First, there's free admission on Saturdays and Sundays for residents of Beacon and the nearby towns of Fishkill, Chelsea, and Glenham. Residents of 14 Hudson Valley counties receive free admission on the last Sunday of every month. And we've listed the 14 counties in the notes below. You can get a discounted combination one day getaway ticket for the Metro North ticket and admission to the DIA from any Metro North station or from a full service vending machine. However, currently this is not available online. The DIA currently offers two special tours where you can enter the museum at 1030 before it officially opens at 11 a.m. There you can have a 30 minute walkthrough of the following two exhibits in a small group setting. First, there's Michael Heiser's negative space installation called North, East, South, West. And then there's Lawrence Wiener's work. And I'm going to have to read that one. Thank you, Diane. And titanium and lead and ferrous oxide. And it's like the periodic table. For those tours, you need to book them in advance with the Dia Center. What did you like best about Beacon? Strolling along Main Street was one of the highlights. I also love the distillery tour along with the Luthier exhibit. Wifey, about yourself? Even though it's considered a city, I love that it has a small town relaxed vibe. It feels like it's worlds away from New York City, yet it could also be in Brooklyn. The Dia Center was pretty special too. What about you viewers? Comment below and let us know what you think you would enjoy most about Beacon. Thanks for exploring Beacon New York with us and we look forward to seeing you on our next exploration. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss a single episode of Diane and George Explore. See you next time. Until we meet again, bye. The world is yours when Diane and George Explore.